is Rin from Super Cat Whispers, as well as from Super Cat Punch. And welcome back. How has your week been? Today, I have a request from Pat Vegeta183. Pat Vegeta says, if you could, I like the three oaths from the Green Lantern comics read. One being the Green Lantern oath. The other two are the Blue Lantern and Sapphire Star oaths. I'm not familiar with the DC comics. But I did find on DC.com a really cool recurring column by the writer Alex Chap, who answers viewer questions. One of the questions in the article I'm going to read today is covering all of the different oaths from the DC Comics, including the three that Pat Vegeta wants to hear. Terrible. 
the Lenothians, a white, monkey-like species, one of the many bottled and preserved by Brainiac. Brainiac sounds familiar. I guess I've seen him somewhere. One Lenothian, Coco the Space Monkey, used to accompany Brainiac as his favorite pet. The Snorians, a biomechanical race with glowing eyes, capable of generating technology from their bodies, hired throughout the galaxy as living tools. Gear, a Lesnarian, comes from comes to Earth 1,000 years in the future as a member of the Legion of Superheroes. Living Stars Like the living planet Moko, some stars in the universe have a sentience of their own and can even take humanoid Aquarius, an evil living star, was once depowered and imprisoned on Earth, where it battled the Justice Society. I'm going to include this little snippet of comic that is posted on the page. Sector 1099, you see a very sinister green question mark person who says, Isamond, can you hear me? Speak to me. I hear you. Not afraid, are you? Of course not. Me? I'm... Wait. Something else I heard you do. Let's get some light on. Not it. The art is really, really pretty. I assume that that lizard-like creature heads into our next alien. Lizardclons. The reptilian cohabitants of the planet Thanagar, with the Thanagarians and their sworn enemies. Isamut Cole, a lizardclon Green Lantern, has visited Earth on Green Lantern. The Makorans, a bone white humanoid alien race, the most renowned of all Makorans, was Selkor, Makor's own superhero, who possessed great mental powers, teleportation, and energy power, energy barrier generation abilities. Selkor was momentarily married to Supergirl during a time where she was stranded on Makor with complete amnesia. After a crisis on infinite Earths, Salkor came to Earth to pay his respects to the woman he knew as Jasma. Malthusians, one of the oldest races in the universe, the powerful Malthusian people appointed themselves the guardians of the universe, founding both the Manhunters and the Green Lantern Corps from their 
centrally located headquarters on the planet. One Malthusian, Appa Ali Upsa, accompanied Hull Jordan and Green Arrow for a time on a road trip across America. Some have suggested that Earth legends of leprechauns were actually Malthusian sightings on Earth, but that's silly. Manhawks. Avian race of marauders, native to Thanagar. The Manhawks led the more humanoid Thanagarians to develop int metal wings in order to combat them in the first place. Eventually, a contingent of Manhawks would arrive to plunder Earth, much to the consternation of Hawkman. Green Martians, the closest neighbors to Earthlings, all but exterminated by a psychic plague. Jaon Jaons, the Martian Manhunter, survives them as an Earth resident. White Martians, the Green Martians' rival in a violent race war before their extermination. A few white Martians still survive, but none more famous than the Earth resident, Imkan Imors, Miss Martian. Metalex, a sentient artificial race resembling Earth construction vehicles, repelled from Xeno forming the Earth in Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin. That would be really scary. Mirania. Not much is known about this human resembling race, except that one, Glenn Gameron, was an interstellar bounty hunter who tracked to Sparrow to Earth and worked with Martian Manhunter and the Justice League Task Force for a time in the 90s. Missilemen, another artificial race of living missiles from an unnamed junkyard planet whose attacks on Earth are frequently thwarted by the metal men. That is really terrifying. Could you imagine living in fear of sentient missiles? Mirks, the monarch humanoid race Golden Age Green Lantern villain, Prince Beryl. The telepathic Mirk Princess Romia marries Alan Scott's sidekick, Toy B. Dickles. Myrmidons, hairless, blue skinned alien who momentarily conquered Earth after luring Hall Jordan and Barry Ellen off-world. The heroes sent them packing once they got back, one issue later. The next segment has the question. Do you know how many versions there are of the Lantern Oaths? Here you go, Bad Vegeta. Alex says, let's 
Let's start with the original, first spoken by the original Greenlander, Alan Scott, from his 1940 debut, All American Comics, number 60. And I shall shed my light over dark evil, for the dark things cannot stand the light. The light of the Green Lantern. Alex says, it may not rhyme, but it does have a bit of a biblical ring to it. Just a short while later, in 1943's Green Lantern number 9, Helen's oath took a new shape. This revised oath was later immortalized as Hal Jordan's own, and the standard oath for the Green Lantern Corps as a whole. And brightest day, and blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship Eagle's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. It wasn't until 1987 that writer Alan Moore first suggested that some lanterns, as alien as they are, would have a completely different relationship the broad concept suggested in the standard lantern oath, and may have their own variations to suit their personal experiences and personalities. During his brief but influential work with the Green Lantern Corps, Alan Moore crafted two new oaths for two unique corpsmen, one in Swamp Thing number 61, for the plant-based Medfell, one of the corps oldest members. In Forest Dark, or Glade Beferned, no blade of grass shall go unturned, but those who have the daylight spurned, tread not where this green lamp has burned. And the author of this article's personal favorite in Green Lantern Annual number 3, where we are introduced to sightless core recruit Rot Lop. No concept of light or vision. Rot Lapfan is trained by Kat Matui to hone his power, not through focus on lanterns or color, but on a particular tone of sound and the instrument that could make it. Loudest din, or hush profound, my ears catch evil's slightest sound. Let those who toll out evil's knell beware my power, the F sharp bell. Since then, other Green Lanterns have put their own oaths to words, including the rebellious Jack T. Chance. You who are wicked, evil, and mean, I am the nastiest creep you've ever seen. Come one, come all. 
put up a fight. I'll pound your butts with Green Lantern's light. Yells I. <laughs> I see. And the oath of the monastic, contemplative baron. In this place of black and gray and dark, the Green Lantern shall be my light. My hope, my strength. All that is good is all I defend. I shall not falter. From Gokari, the first Green Lantern chosen. From the vicious, warlike, good ones. Against the dishonor. Traitors fight. I stand beside my clan to fight. With dying breath, I claw and bite. Beware my power, Green Lantern's light. And the Daxamite, Lantern Soda Yacht, driven mad after a thousand years, and final crisis, legion of three worlds, and brightest day, through blackest night, no other core shall spread its light, but those who try to stop what's right, burn like my power, green In 2008's Green Lantern, number 27, we're introduced to the concept of the Alpha Lanterns, an internal affairs division to enforce the law among the core themselves. They came with an oath of their own. In nights of war, obey the laws forevermore. Misconduct must be answered for. Swear us the chosen, the Alpha Core. The Green Lantern Oath has been shown to take a different form on other Earths as well, such as the mystical Earth 13 of the Infinite Crisis video game. In forests deep where darkness dwells, and dungeons dank beneath ancient fells, let those who seek to rule the night beware my power the emerald light. The groovy magic lantern of Earth 47, created by Grant Morrison, first speaks his own oath in the Green Lantern number 11. When it's groovy, when it's grim, we hum the living guru's hymn. When other lanterns lose their stuff, we keep the magic lantern lit. You can make that rhyme in your own head. <laughs> in Dark Knight's metal, the corrupt Bruce Wayne the dark multiverse, known as Dawnbreaker, gets a ring of his own, which he wields with his own. That's really scary. With darkness black, I choke the light. No brightness day escapes my sight. 
I turn the dawn to midnight. Beware my power, Dawnbreaker's place. Geoff Johns began introducing cores of every color in his own Green Lantern run of the 2000s. Each one came with its own different attendant of the fear-wielding Sinestro core had two variants. The main one like this. In blackest day and brightest night, beware your fears made into light. Let those who try to stop what's right burn like my power, Sinestro. Sinestro's deputy, Arkilo, briefly took over as chief of the Corps in its founder's absence. He tweaked the original oath to substitute Sinestro's might for Arkilo's. A small change, but the author of this article is counting it as two. the rage-based Red Lantern Corps. With blood and rage of crimson red, ripped from a corpse so freshly dead, together with our hellish heat, will burn you all. That is your fate. Well, that's terrible. There are two versions of this oath as well, as this rather gruesome oath was toned down significantly when the Red Lanterns were introduced as principal antagonists of Green Lantern, the animated series. With blood and rage of crimson red, we fill men's souls with Twist your mind with pain and hate. We'll burn you all. That is your fate. The Blue Lantern Corps was appropriately given a much more soothing credo for the troubled times to come. In a fearful day and raging with strong hearts full, our souls ignite. When all seems lost in the war of light, look to the stars, for hope burns bright. I like that one. The Star Sapphire Corps was given an oath which reflects their ability to draft others into their ranks. For hearts long lost and full of fright, for those alone in blackest night, accept our ring and join our fight. Love conquers all with violet light. The enigmatic and isolated Indigo tribe has an oath as well, but one which has never been translated into English. We can only speculate based on context clues to its true meaning. To Lorexon, born a Tromo Fan Tornek Wat Ur Dear Lantern Care 
Nu aben sur Talek Leknok For morrow sur That leaves us With the orange lantern From the core seven Whose oath was left a mystery Until the very end Of Joff John nine-year run for most of the time since the soul orange lantern was introduced the avaricious Lar Fleas's oath was assumed to simply be the word mine but John's continued to allude towards an oath we'd one day learn and fall which was finally 2013's Green Lantern 20. What's mine is mine, and mine, and mine, and mine, and mine, and mine, and mine, mine. not yours. That is an incredible love. When Blackest Night arrived, the Black Lantern's herald, Black Hand, had an oath of his own. The Blackest Night falls from the skies. The darkness grows as all light dies. We crave your hearts and your demise. By my black hand, the dead shall arise. If the contrasting white lantern core comes with an oath, we know it not. Two other oaths have been introduced since the end of John's tenure on Prime Earth. First, the oath of the phantom ring in Green Lanterns, a highly dangerous artifact which can emulate the powers of any ring on the emotional spectrum for anyone who wields it, regardless of their worthiness or merit. It's oath. Desperate day and hopeless night, the phantom ring is our last light. We yearn for power, strength, and might. I seize the ring. That is my right. And finally, the ultraviolet core of negative emotion. Discovered by Sinestro and Scott Snyder's run on Justice League. By shield of day and shield of night, we feed and grow beyond all sight. Your darkest self shall be our night. Wield the sword of unseen light. The next question is, hey, where is Gotham actually at in the United States? Over the many years since Batman first stalked the night, This question has had three answers. More than any other city, Gotham is inspired by New York City, where creators Bob Kane and Bill Finger lived as they crafted the world of the most popular superhero in fiction. It's 
even said at times that Metropolis is New York during the day, and Gotham is New York at night. Or that Metropolis is New York above 14th Street, and Gotham is New York below. can't be the answer because, as we're seeing right now in I Am Batman, New York City itself is still very much a going concern in the DC Universe. So where in the world is Gotham City? The most common answer you'll find to this question today is no comment. Specifically defining Gotham City's location, many creators would argue would limit the potential stories you could tell with it, rather than keeping it an ambiguous every city, which could stand in for the unique challenges faced by every urban center more satisfying answer to those of us more cartographically, cartographically inclined. I can speak English, I promise. Which has been endorsed on and off by authorities at DC itself over the years. This New Jersey. The first time this very commonly answered, answered question was answered this way, on record, was a 1977 issue of the amazing world of DC Comics, an in-house fan magazine produced by DC themselves at the time. This tossed off factoid for nosy busybodies like you and I made its way into the comics for the first time in 1979's World's Finest Comics, number 259. In 1983's Detective Comics, number 503, Gotham's location is narrowed down further still, where it's specifically 20 miles south of the Jersey Shore. Unless you believe this is strictly a pre-crisis idea. Gotham's Garden State location has been reaffirmed in 1991's Batman Shadow of the Bat Annual Number 1. To date, the most important res resource for those wishing to map DC's America is 1990. Atlas of the DC Universe, a resource book published by Mayfair Games as a supplement to the DC Heroes role-playing game. Over 30 years since its publication, Atlas of the DC Universe still represents the most complete attempt to map the location for all of DC's most notable fictional settings. Metropolis, before you ask, is just across the bay from Gotham, in Delaware. Although it's been quite a while since Gotham's specific location has been recommitted to in the comics themselves. Gotham's New Jersey location is still part of the DC Extended Universe films, with promotional material and easter eggs adhering to the suggestions from the 1990 Atlas. That's the end of the article. If you have something that you want to ask about the DC Universe, do feel free to ask the Alex Jaff on the DC community. 
I really enjoyed reading through this. Thank you so much for the request about Vegeta. I know quite a bit of information came with it on the side, but I hope that it was all interesting. I do hope that you enjoyed reading through this with me. Good night. That I was able to melt away some of your worries from today. Help you to relax. Help you to sleep. I hope I made you smile today. And I will see you next time. Uh-huh. <sighs>